So you're at the end of grad school. You've already applied for some postdoc positions and you've gotten a couple interviews. One of the things you're gonna have to do at your interviews is prepare a presentation to talk about the work that you did in grad school. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. How important is it? And what do you need to do to prepare? And how are you gonna succeed in doing it? So obviously when I applied for postdocs, I did several of these. And not only did I do several of these, but when I was a postdoc, I watched a lot of these. And so I have some ideas about what I think made really good presentations and what made really bad presentations. So in terms of a presentation for a postdoc position, it's a little different than a presentation that you might do on an internal or external seminar or something that you might do at a, um, at a conference. Um, so let's talk about what some of the differences are. I think that the main goal that you need to keep in mind when doing your presentation is that you need to do two things. The first thing is you need to be able to give a brief background of yourself, and then you need to walk the people from point A, which is the larger question that you're trying to answer, and then B, how your research answers said question. And I know that that's typical for a presentation, but I'm gonna go into detail about how it's a little bit different in this situation. So the first thing that you're gonna to need to do is introduce yourself. And you're not gonna usually do this in a presentation, but I think for the purposes of a postdoc presentation, it's okay and actually pretty good. You know, I've seen people give background about like what country they're from, of course, in academics, it's a, you know, multiracial, multinational, um, area of work and so embrace it let people know hey this is where i come from this is where i went to school you know this is my wife or kids um pets this is you know where i've been in life it's actually really interesting getting to to know that about people and it also lets them to start thinking about would i get along with this person because this is one of the things that's ultimately going to happen is the pi is going to go to the postdocs or grad students and say hey would you get along with person X? Um, yes, of course, the science is important, but the less that they have to manage interpersonal conflict, the better. And so they're really looking to see if you're going to all get along. So make it a little personal. It's going to help you to stand out. Now, the next thing you're going to have to do is demonstrate a clear hypothesis. And to do this, you're going to have to frame your research with what the current literature is the current knowledge of the field and you need to do this in a very 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 and I can't stress this enough clear manner because it is most likely that you're going to interview at a lab that doesn't do exactly what you do so for example you may be in a metabolic field which is what I was in I studied uh, thermogenic fat thermogenic brown fat but what if I was in an interviewing in another lab that was doing something related to kidney or to the energetics of the heart or to the liver, you know, muscle? There's a whole bunch of other labs that are me uh, metabolic labs that I could have gone to for a postdoc interview. But they don't know what thermogenic fat is. Now, this is just an example, but of course, it's going to vary from person to person. But you need to keep in mind that likely, especially if it's a big departmental uh, interview, um, they're not going to have the same background as you. They're not going to know the literature you know. They're not going to know all of the terminology you know. They're not going to know what the big problems in your field are. So you need to, more than you normally would, hold their hand and walk them through each step. And the first thing you have to do is define the terminology that you're going to use, what's the big problem in the field, and kind of how do you plan to address it? What is your overarching hypothesis? So I'm in field X, there is this problem in the field, we hypothesize this is what's happening, and this is how we're going to go about testing it. That is really crucial that you set that up from the beginning because if that's not set up from the beginning, you're going to lose all of your audience. And I've seen some people that I have no doubt had 
really, really killer data and nailed some important questions, but they did not set it up clearly for myself or the rest of the audience in the beginning and they lost us and it was over within the first five to ten minutes of the presentation and the rest of the presentation i'm just kind of looking at the clock waiting for it to finish and that happens all the time so the beginning part needs to be really clear along the same lines as you're going through and you're explaining the data that you have keep in mind not everybody's going to be as up to date with all of the techniques as, as you are. So obviously there are certain techniques that most labs are gonna use. So most people understand what's a Western blot, what's qPCR, or what's an ELISA. Um, but I'm sure every single lab out there has specific techniques that are gonna be different. And even if they are similar, you need to stress variables within there that could change. So for example, um, most people are familiar with how um, microscopy works. So if you do confocal microscopy, for example, and you could have different stains, they look really pretty, they're nice, but what is the green stain in your slide? Is it something that every single person is going to know what that means? Why is it important? So it's not just defining in my, um, in my field of view here, the green stain represents X protein. It's defining exactly why is it important that I'm showing that, that it does this, and this is why I'm staining it. Oh, these are the genes that I'm looking at, and not just saying that blank genes are involved in the electron transport chain. No, like what does each one do? Let the people know, take them step by step, hold their hand. And it's even more important for this because what the PI is looking for is one, how well do you know your stuff? So do you have any idea what's going on or are you somebody that basically is getting their degree because the PI gave you a project and kind of held your hand and took you through it? Or are you someone that like really is in command of your stuff? And they're gonna look for how you tie everything together. Um, the next thing is make sure as you're going along that you give credit to yourself. So. This is where you could really show yourself off. You got a illustration in there that's from a review article that you wrote. Boom, make sure that you give yourself credit in the footer of your slide that like this is your publication. You've published this data that you're presenting. Boom, put it in the footer and say, you know, this is work that I already published in this journal. Um, at the beginning of your talk, I'm going to talk about story X, which was published here. There's a few other stories that I published that I haven't talked about because of, you know, just one story, but this is one in particular I want to talk about. At the end, oh, I had this pre-doctoral fellowship or this stipend or, or what have you. You know, show that off. Let them know I have these accolades. This is a nice way to kind of pepper it in and kind of puff yourself up without actually coming across as um, like a show off. Um, the last thing that's really important is envisioning where your work is going to go. And I think this may be, may be just as important, if not as important as the actual research itself. So when you're doing this, try to answer the question, if I had another 10 years left in the lab, where would I take this? So I think what grad students struggle with the most is they can come up with a hypothesis, they could come up with an experiment to test it with all the right controls and everything. They could get the data, analyze it, interpret it, and they could kind of form the next hypothesis. And I think that's, that's the issue, is grad students will form a hypothesis, they will outline specifically what their next step is, and then they're done. And that's the big bridge that you need to cap is, yes, it's it's nice to say, okay, now based on the work that I did, these are the next one or two experiments that I would do, but talk long-term. So not just what is the next experiment that I could do, but, but for example, if my hypotheses are right, this is where it's going to play out long-term. Um, not, oh, it's going to cure a disease, but that intermediate step. So for example, um, you 
did a study where you did some kind of proteomic analysis. Proteomics are all the rage nowadays. So you did a proteomic screen and you found a protein and you verified that this protein does X in the tissue and now you've published it. And that's what you're gonna present on. What you'll see a lot of grad students do is say, well, now I'm gonna follow up by um, giving this protein to a mouse or knocking this protein out on a mouse. Yeah, that's interesting and that's the next logical step, but like what after that? You know, this protein is involved in this and so we're gonna use this specific model and we're going to test it in this way to try to test this specific disease. And after that, maybe we want to align with, you know, this biotech company because they have the resources to be able to help us with a disease model and, you know, going on and on and on. These are the types of things that they want to see, like big picture. Where does your research really fit in? Um, because it's your project isn't just in a vacuum. It's not just one project. It fits into a bigger scope. And that's the biggest thing that they're going to be looking for. The last thing that they're going to be looking for is how you answer questions. And to me, the question section or the Q&A section of a presentation really is, um, for a grad student, the dead giveaway of how much work they did versus their PI. Um, I've seen a few people over the years that have given presentations that were like the most stellar presentations. I'm talking... Um, beautiful animations, beautifully well-designed slides. It was so well rehearsed and polished. It, it was like a presidential speech. Um, the data looked beautiful. And then when it came to the Q&A, it just fell apart. And that's because what you could tell is that these people really didn't understand what their project is. Um, so for example, if you give a presentation and then one of the questions is, okay, if you had say unlimited funds, how would you do your study differently? Or what other experiments would you add? Or kind of what would your next direction be? If I if money wasn't an issue and you could just do anything under, you know, in the world, what would you do? And if you answer with crickets, it kind of means to me that you have no creativity, okay? Like, what would you do? Okay, well, this is, I really want to do this RNA-seq experiment. You know, that's something I really want to do, but it's just too expensive. We haven't been able to do it. Okay, well, now that you have funds, you would do that. Um, okay, so you told me what, like, your data means, but how does it answer this fundamental question, or where does it stand in with this? Crickets. Um, so you're, you're showing this data, but... In your introduction, you didn't really demonstrate how your data aligns with authors A, B, and C who are, you know, PIs at the institute you're interviewing in and your data contradicts theirs. You know, where how do you reconcile your data contradicting theirs? Crickets. That's a problem. And so I think that the Q&A section is something that you really need to practice with your PI because it's seriously a dead giveaway for people that that didn't prepare and don't really know what their project is. But I think really in general, that's the scope of the presentation is they're gonna be looking for like, who are you? What techniques do you know? And maybe are they transferable? How do you present to yourself? How do you not just present your, your work, but like yourself? And you know, how does all your work fit in? How well do you understand it? How well are you able to explain it? Um, because that's something that they, they just don't want to have to teach you as a postdoc is like how to understand your work and present your work. They want you to already have a good idea of how to do that. Um, and so I think that overall, the presentation part of a postdoc interview is actually a decently important part. I think it's one of those that kind of gets overlooked that people think, oh, well, I got this interview and you know now I'm good. But I think that I've seen several people that have interviewed for postdocs that really did bomb this part. And I think it really it threw out their chance of ever landing the postdoc that they wanted. So make sure you take it seriously. Um, so with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.